Good morning. This is Carolyn Borba, and I am working on my third assignment of Pillars of Leadership. Moses, the power of common things. Well, you know, once again, once again, we see Moses um, in this common thing. Uh, they're talking about wood or a stick. But once again, we see Moses objecting, <laughs> asking those questions. When he said to God, objecting, who am I? And number two, he said, what shall I tell them? Then he said, what, of, what, what if they don't believe me? And not, <laughs> sorry, um, that what he was doing, I can't read my own writing, <laughs> uh, what he was talking about in that fourth one was that he had fear of the memory that he had of the sin that he had done. But God's response was direct. Not talking about the wood, the staff, the stick, not what's in your hand. It was a simple shepherd's staff. But what God was saying, trust me, it's not about you, Moses. It's still not about you. You know, I am sanctifying you and I am changing you to be the leader that I created you to be. And because of that, you know, God is just saying, lay it down. Just lay it down and let me have it. And what's he talking about, let me have it? He's talking about our lives. We have no life and we really have no purpose without him. We may think we do. We may go to college. We may have incredible jobs. We may feel as though we're powerful in the workplace. But the truth is, whatever that purpose is may not be the actual purpose that God created you for. You know, I was listening to a lady last night and she was talking about how she, she is beautiful. And uh, she was a model for some very famous people. But the truth of the matter is, while she was using her outer beauty, there was still a longing in her that had not been satisfied. And that longing was what God had put in her DNA. I mean, there are gifts within each and every human being that walks the face of the earth. And those gifts are activated by the Holy Spirit. So once we are believers, there really isn't anything that we cannot do because God has put those gifts in us. We may not all do the same thing, obviously, but our gifts are powerful. We must just give it up to Him. We need to trust God. We are so used to trusting ourselves, even though we're believers, even though we worship and praise the Holy Spirit, we still want to control our own lives. But what He wants us to do is trust Him. And how do we learn to trust Him? By knowing Him. That's what he told Moses to do. Stretch out your hand. Pick that stick up or put it down and it became a snake. And then he said, pick it up by the tail. That's a command of God because God already knows the answer. You do what I tell you and I will direct your paths. But we can't do what he's telling us if we don't know him. And we can't trust him if we don't really know him. So how do we get to know him? By his word by stepping out, by stepping out and doing what feels not comfortable, but what kind of feels natural a lot of times. And as we move forward, He will consecrate us. He will consecrate the gift that's in us, and it may not even be what we stepped out to do. But until we step out, it's like back in the other lesson when Moses turned to the burning bush, when he wanted to know what that was, when his heart said, I must know this, I must learn of this. That's what God is saying, step out. 
there's a book called Just Step Across the Room, and it's, it's the same kind of thing. It's there, it's in us, and it's common. You know, sometimes we ask, <laughs> we pray for money, or we pray for our finances or whatever, and a lot of times God has said to me, look around you. Look and see what it is you already have. And there's probably, not probably, there are things there that not only can make you, if you will, by selling money, but it could open a door for you because we don't know where it comes from. So that's all part of being obedient. I'm not telling you about sell everything, but I just believe that that's how God works. And so I think our gift is in us. I think it's a DNA. Does he use us for other things? Yes, absolutely. But, you know, it's like... Um, the difference in people and the difference in their gifts. And I'm going to read what I wrote here because, you know, a room full of worshipers was one of the comments that Will was making. Common things, a shepherd's staff, a, a hand but anointed, consecrated by God. The mightiest empire in the world was defeated. When we talk about a room full of worshipers, common hands, common feet, common gift of dance, consecrated and transformed by God. What I saw instantly when I was reading that was the difference in people and the different gifts they have, even in worshiping. I mean, there are people who are so graceful when they move. You know, they may not have a lot of choreography, but they can move. They can worship God with their heart, and it shows. It shows that it's anointed by God. There are those people who are strong in warfare, maybe with a banner or a flag or a billow. I mean, there's power in that. But some people are real gifted warriors. I know we're all called to be warriors. I understand that part of the worship. But I'm just talking about the gifts within people. And so the billows and the colors for worship are glorious. Cloth anointed for his glory like Jennifer when she dances with her claws, they're anointed. That's a gift. And if we look at the gifts that are so natural to us, sometimes we've put them aside. You know, I spent over 53 years in the beauty industry. I love to cut hair. I, I love to color hair. I mean, I loved everything about that industry. Well, I no longer can physically do that. But I now am, you know, doing faces, laying hands on people. And yesterday, when I was working on this lady, and I've been reading this study, so when I was working on this one lady, and I was running my hands through her hair, and I was praying for her at the end of her massage, or her facial, and when she got off the bed, she said, you were praying for me, I could feel that. Now, you know, that's not me. That's not about me. That's all about God and the gift and how he anoints us when we use that hand gift. I can decorate, you know, I can paint. I can do all of those things. But I just move out where I feel God is taking me, and I think that's what he's asking us to do. So, again, I love Will's studies, and thank you, and blessings.